The fish place isn't bad. Uh, what's that? Where they make fish, Fisherman's Wharf. Fisherman's Wharf, think? yes, that's all right. Uh, Who, who's 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 buying? Oh well, I I had thought I was counting on you. Were you? Yeah, I tell You're you wrong. why. Specialist from Boston says that recent tests using a laser beam shot through a glass fiber has proven highly successful in the treatment of clogged arteries. And just for you tonight, our Wayne Shannon comments on this breakthrough. Wayne Bell. Thank you, James. I can't imagine why clogged arteries would be of interest to me, but perhaps you're old or fat and it's a concern of yours. <laughs> I had a nutritionist tell me once that if I didn't change my eating habits, I wouldn't get a clog. I'd get a sand dune. <laughs> so I changed nutritionists. I now have what is called a revisionist nutritionist. <laughs> That's a food expert that essentially believes that life is like the game of golf. You expect to spend a lot of time in the rough. But be that as it am, this doctor from Boston University's medical center says that laser beams shot through flexible glass fibers with a metal tip on the business end is the wave of the future for unclogging arteries in humane beings. Over 200 patients have experienced this new procedure, technical name laser angioplasties, which entails a laser beam heating the metal tip of a glass fiber to 750 degrees, which burns the clog open without causing damage to the blood vessel, and unlike the popular procedure of inserting a small balloon, doesn't need to be repeated at a later date. I should hope so. I mean, if and when a time should ever arrive when somebody convinces me that a glass dousing rod is going up my highways and byways, <laughs> heated to match the temperature of the bright side of the moon. Trust me, there will be no encores. I can't remember when I've had this much fun. I don't know if you have ever driven this route before, Never. But, uh, but there can't be two miles of solid land between New Orleans and Lafayette. The majority of the 100, 150 miles or so is swamp or what is called bayou. You either fall or drive into that swamp, that's when it becomes by you. <laughs> well, our Wayne Shannon has some final thoughts as we draw to a close on this Celebrate California adventure. And just for you tonight, here's Mr. Bo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, James. Well, campers, this is it. As Gabby Hayes used to say, in the end of the hill. <laughs> Anyone else would have said it's the end of the trail, but after 500 B Westerns, his mouth went. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Mark and Tom and I decided to do Din Din tonight at Mayor Clint Eastwood's famous Hog's Breath Inn and Restaurant in nearby Carmel. I got a meal that included a brown sauce in which was about two dozen or so little stones that tasted suspiciously like pepper. But I figured, what the hey, if my man Clint can eat peewees, <laughs> so can I. And to answer your question, was Mayor Eastwood there to welcome us as we dined? Let me put it to you this way. No. Now, tomorrow, this whole gang of mine and me will be at San Jose's Living History Day, as we certainly hope to see you there. Until then, do you realize that within a few scant miles of where I'm sitting right now lives the likes of Paul Anka, Merv Griffin, and Mayor Clint Eastwood? <laughs> Who says no man is an island? I want to thank the best TV remote staff and crew west of the Mississippi. And trust me. I want to do this again real soon. <laughs> Jim, Sylvia. What did Gabby Hayes say again? And <laughs> then, 